All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. All right, let's talk about Xbox. I love Phil Spencer. Personally, I love him. Because I've said this before, Phil Spencer is a content creator's best friend. Every time this man does an interview, every time this man opens his mouth, it's a headline. It's an absolute headline. You're guaranteed to have some shit to talk about. So I personally love the man for that. Um, all right, so Xbox. So let's do the bullet point version on this whole uh, red line comment that Phil Spencer made. Um, so Xbox chief Phil Spencer. Uh, I think this was an actual a direct interview with Bloomberg. Um, and here are the things he says, right? So first of all, they're planning a handheld. Um, planning sounds, and he, he admitted it's years away, right? They seem to be in the very early stages of this, of this handheld. The industry is a, is a circle. It's, the, it's just a huge circle. Cause you know, what was it? Uh, 10 years ago, um, you know, handhelds, you know, were this very important staple in gaming and then Everybody abandoned it aside from Nintendo. They made a hybrid console, which was a co console and a handheld. And everybody backed off because Nintendo, nobody could fuck with Nintendo in that avenue. Um, and nobody still can, honestly. But I think they've realized we may not necessarily need to compete because we don't need to make uh, specific games for a handheld platform. We could just play the same games we play on console, we could just give people the ability to play that on, on a handheld. So now it's just, it's just this whole cycle of everybody abandoning it, and now everybody seems to want to come back to make making a handheld. I, Xbox obviously never did. Um, PlayStation has, they abandoned it. We know PlayStation um, based on the, based on the success, uh, uh, I guess, of the, uh, the portal. Um, and what they, and I guess their projections that they can make a, uh, a handheld that plays games locally. They probably see some success in that and that, they, that they can come back into it. PlayStation is probably going to do it too. Xbox, Xbox is going to do it. The switch two is going to come out. So handhelds are making a comeback along with the, you know, all the different versions of like the steam deck and, you know, the Asus rogs and every, and everybody's got their own version now. So handhelds are back. Um, I don't really have any. I don't, I don't really have any comments specifically on an Xbox handheld other than a hey, have at it. Um, I don't, I don't really, I, and anything Xbox does, I don't really see it being this runaway success because I think they've sabotaged their own brand and you know, just what Xbox is. Um, so yeah, listen, I, I, I'm sure people will use it sim just how they use a Steam Deck or an Ace, Aces ROG. Uh, they use that as an Xbox handheld. Um, so some people who are Xbox fans will just continue. To, will just if Xbox puts out a handheld, they'll be excited about it and do the same and treat it the, the same way, I guess. But an Xbox handheld doesn't really excite me um, because I still think they are lacking the games. Um, that people and, and they're killing off their fan base slowly. I think that's very clear, but I don't want to, you know, beat that dead horse. So yeah, handhelds are coming back. Next is Phil Spencer made this comment regarding no red lines um, about Xbox exclusives, meaning there is no barrier on what games can, what Xbox games can go to PlayStation. If you were, if you remember, it was at the beginning of this year, January. Phil Spencer is a, is a, that, that silver tongue devil. So at first they kind of like tried to, uh, placate, I guess a little bit and coddle, uh, the Xbox fans by telling them, Hey, it's only three or four games. No big deal. We're not guaranteeing anything past that. Relax. Um, Relax. It's it's okay. This is not the end of the world, right? And then I don't remember the exact timeline, but I want to say what four or five months later, I think Phil Spencer and and Sarah Bond made another statement. Don't remember exactly what it was, but essentially, in January they put the tip in, and then four or five months later they went a little bit deeper on y'all. Okay, first they was like, oh, just a tip. Then they was like. Eh, we're going to get a little bit more, right? Um, 
And then that, you know, that pulled down the barrier a, a little bit more. There was still hope, though, right? Because even though they essentially they said more games were going to go to uh, more Xbox games were going to go multi-platform and to PlayStation and, and other platforms, there was still hope for certain games that were sacred, like Halo, like Gears, uh, like Forza. Now, listen, the man just went balls deep on y'all Xbox fans. He did. He did. He said there is no length that we won't go. We are, we're putting everything over there. Everything over there on the other platforms. So Halo is not safe, Gears is not safe, Forza is not safe, nothing is safe. This is essentially admitting to going full multi, multi-platform, multi okay? Um, yeah, let me, let me, is there anything I need to read from this? So he says the business is healthier from it. Uh, let me just see if I can read this article real quick. With Microsoft's multi-platform video game release strategy in full swing, some Xbox fans are wondering whether flagship exclusives such as Halo will ever make the jump to PlayStation. According to Microsoft's gaming chief, Phil Spencer, there are no red lines in its first party lineup. Uh, yeah, there was Pentiment, Ground, Grounded, Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves. Um, then they announced like Doom, The Dark Ages, I think, uh, Indiana Jones also, uh, let me see what else he said. We run a business. Well, that's what he said in August. He said, we run a business. It's definitely true inside Microsoft. The bar is high for us in terms of the delivery. Uh, we have to give back to the company because we get a level, 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 Jesus Christ, there's level of support from the company that's just amazing and what we're able to go do. Uh, so I look at this. How can we make our games as strong as possible? Our platform continues to grow on console, PC, and cloud. It's the strategy that works for us. Uh, he said, I do not see, this is the most recent statement, I do not see some sort of red line in our portfolio that says thou must not. And he's talking about um, putting games everywhere else. So nothing is sacred, nothing is safe. It's, it's for the streets. It's for the concrete. It's for the community. It's, it's for everybody to enjoy now. Um, so that's what that is. And we all know that we, I, I mean, most of us figured that. Like when, when Phil Spencer at the beginning of the year, I think it was, really said that it's just four games. Listen, I know this. And listen, I don't think PlayStation is safe from the possibility of this. Let me move my cat. He has a cone on because he has this little uh, cream that I got to rub on his side. So I, don't want him to lick it. I know people are going to ask, why does he have a fucking orange cone around his neck? Anyway, I don't think like I, I think it's let me make this clear. I think I don't think PlayStation is going to go as far as Xbox, but I do think that, it, that it's likely that there are select games that will go some type of multi-platform that PlayStation owns. Like, I still think Helldivers may go to another platform. I it's my belief the smarter move would be to put Helldivers 2 on the next uh, Nintendo Switch console that, that's coming out next year rather than an Xbox because they seem to, PlayStation seems to be open to making money on other platforms aside from Xbox. They're okay with putting it on PC. They're okay with even either partnering or putting games on Nintendo Switch. It really, to me, it really only seems the only as as long as we're killing Xbox, bec apparently because they, I think, is they see them as a actual competitor that they want to kill. As long as we're killing, but also benefiting from Xbox, not necessarily killing, but winning, and um, you know, winning the competition. But as long as you're alive enough that we can also profit off you and your games, I think that's a comfortable position for them, and that's what they're okay with. But I just want to let it be known. I don't think PlayStation is completely beyond doing uh, some of this to an extent, especially with them, with how much money they lost on Concord and Firewalk and all. One thing all of this, this entire situation has made very clear is money will be the deciding factor in any of this. It will, it'll always be money. Nothing else, you know, even what we consider the, you know, the precedence of how 
the gaming industry should be and what we're used to. Nothing like that is absolute anymore. So I think it's so I think all of this stuff is, you know, possible for PlayStation 2 to an extent. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been like it's been kind of like a slow bleed for Xbox Xbox fans who have held the line for lack of a, a, a better term and held on to hope that it, it wouldn't be Halo, it wouldn't be Gears, it wouldn't be Forza. Like I said, now it's everything. So it, it's nothing. It's it's there's nothing up for speculation. Everything is is going over. And like Phil Spencer said, it makes their business healthier. And it's kind it's kind of like a beneficial, you know, thing between um PlayStation and Xbox. PlayStation gets to be the market leader, of course, if you're not including the the Switch in that. Um but PlayStation gets to be the market leader and and, and it gets to win this competition between Xbox and it it gets, you know, to dominate in its own lane. Um while also getting the Xbox games. And it's kind of like this, def PlayStation is kind of like this de facto console now, right? Because the Switch, at least the current Switch, and even the next Switch, they say it's going to be comparable to like PS4, Xbox One. The PlayStation is, is essentially becoming the only console that, listen, if you just want to play most games, like I said, aside from Switch exclusives, exclusives and multi-plats, that's the de facto, de facto console. You got to think about it, right? Because Xbox has been killing their, their brand, and I'm going to get to this ad stuff. Think about what GTA 6 is going to do on PlayStation, for PlayStation. Before, right, let's say it was even last generation where PlayStation the PS4 dominated the Xbox one, right? Let's say the sales were, you know, 60, 40 or 70, 30, right? There was all in the, in the generation before, if it was like 60, 40 in favor of Xbox, cause we know 360 was better that generation. PlayStation always kind of had to compete and split what these games, um, what these games did for the platform. GTA six is, it's since it's not on PC and most people, even even PC fans will it will admit that they're probably not going to wait two years. So essentially, everybody that wants to play GTA six, like 90 percent of them are going to be on a PlayStation. Do you know what that's fucking going to do to PlayStation and for PlayStation? The influx of money that it's, it's essentially like it's not an exclusive, but it's where 90 percent of people are going to be playing. GTA 6. The fact that it's not P not on PC is fucking like that's a big thing. So with Xbox essentially bowing out, that type of like serendipitous ben you know beneficial uh you know just benefit is just naturally falling to PlayStation that it's just becoming the de facto console to to play most things. They don't even have to do anything. They're not, they don't have to do anything. So, and Xbox, like they said, they get, they get the money, which is what they seem to care about. And PlayStation gets the money also, and they get the console sales. Xbox is not getting the console sales. They've given up on their console. So PlayStation still cares about that. Xbox proclaims they don't really care about the hardware and all that. So PlayStation still cares about the hardware, the software. They're still doing those conventional things. So it's kind of like a win-win, I guess you could say. Um, now for this whole Xbox, this new Xbox ad, this, this is an Xbox, you know, there's this new Xbox ad out where they show an Xbox. This is an Xbox. They show a PC. This is an Xbox for your lap. They show the, uh, steam deck. This is an Xbox that, that tags along the S the series S this is still an Xbox. Then there's the, uh, the quest three. This is an Xbox. Then there's the Amazon fire. This is an Xbox. <clears throat> essentially the phone essentially they're saying you can play xbox from everywhere my problem with this ad aside from it their their strategy of just making oh this ha the, the the theory and this philosophy that having something everywhere 
makes it more desirable is actually the opposite effect, in my opinion. Putting, making an Xbox platform essentially virtually and playable on everything and everywhere doesn't make more people want to use it. And I'm not even sure more people are using it even with this fact. I, I, I guess maybe the numbers might show, show that in their, um, in their financial results, maybe. I'm not even sure. But it just doesn't make Xbox a more desirable platform. It's literally dying off right in front of our face. And my second issue is that, my second real issue is like, it, it's the ad itself is by itself is not confusing. The messaging by itself with this is not bad. The problem is, is Xbox releases this like a new campaign to reintroduce themselves every other month. They always have this grand campaign and grad grand ad where with this, you know, with with the music and shit. Oh, it essentially reintroducing them. Why do you have to reintroduce your brand every few months? If you have to reintroduce your brand and tell people what you are and who you are every few months, something's wrong. That's bad. You're doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like no other brand has to like come up with a new marketing campaign and a new slogan every few months. So, you know, everyone, they, some do it like once a year, you know, every once in a while, new slogan, um, maybe new branding, shit like that. Right. This or Xbox does it like every few months, in my opinion, it looks like we get a new one. They, they have to like. There's just this shift in their identity every few months and they don't they don't have it. And it's like they don't even have an identity. What is what is Xbox's identity? That's the bad thing about these ads, bro. It's like, come on, bro. Everything is an Xbox. If everything is an Xbox, then nothing is an Xbox. Like you're watering down the product. You're stepping on your own dope. It's just the shit is stepped on. That's that's what it is. It, it's pouring mad water in the Kool-Aid. Eventually, it's not Kool-Aid no more. This is just some flavored water. If everything is like that, this, this is flavored water, dog. It ain't Kool-Aid no more. That's facts. Every, everything can't be an Xbox, bro. You can't go around telling people, oh, 10 different things are an Xbox. Well, okay, well, then... What does that do for the actual box? But I guess y'all don't care about that. I guess it doesn't matter anymore according to the strategy that they're going with. But um, listen, if Xbox wants to step on their own product, um, what do I know? I didn't go to, I'm not a, you know, I'm not the marketing guy. I'm just, I'm just a consumer and I'm just telling you what I see. But, uh. Yeah. Um, thank you, Xbox, for being in the news with this handheld Phil, Spen Phil Spencer's statements and uh, this new ad. Um, congrats. I, I, ho I hope it works out, works out for y'all. Bold move. Let's see if it pays off. All right. I'm out. Let me know what y'all think about all this. And uh, I guess a PlayStation is an Xbox, too, since... Uh, all the games are going to it. PC is an Xbox. Handhelds are an Xbox. Uh, PlayStation is an Xbox. Switch is an Xbox. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm out. Peace.